In this video, we're going to cover some of the new preview features that came out as part of Power BI's November 2024 update, including Copilot for mobile, the new path layer for Azure Map Visuals, Text Slicer Visual, and metric sets for Fabric. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with Copilot, which is now available for the Power BI mobile apps and is basically a quick way to get summaries and insights from your report. Copilot is Microsoft's AI generative model that allows you to do things like create whole reports for you, summarize insights without really a lot of effort. So to use it, you can click the Copilot icon from the mobile app on the top right, which will first ask you to either get summary and insights it will then give you a bullet pointed response based on your request. These bullet points can have references that you can click, which will direct you directly to that visual that it's summarizing. Interacting with the suggestions at the bottom will get you different insights, which is handy if you're looking to tweak the insights and summaries that you're getting from Copilot. This is just on the mobile. Now, Copilot as a feature has been available for Power BI for quite some time now. It's been available for the Power BI desktop and service, which is handy for those that are wanting to leverage AI in their reports. For those of you that are in the service, there's now an added ability to include Copilot summaries in your subscriptions, which is basically Power BI's way to allow you to send Power BI reports automatically in a scheduled email. So when you're choosing to use the standard subscription option, you will have the option to turn on the AI generated summary by Copilot. You can choose to see the preview of the summary before you turn on your subscription, which is basically a bullet pointed summary of your reports that you're sending across. You can still include the typical screenshot or link to your report if you want your users to investigate the report themselves. Just bear in mind that AI summaries can be prone to mistakes or hallucinations. So if you're using this feature, you'd wanna be careful with how and when you want to use it. Copilot is a feature that requires you to have a fabric capacity or premium license. So I haven't really been covering this in greater detail in the past because I don't have either. However, if you do have it and you can try it out, let me know how Copilot for mobile or the subscription works for you. There's a new path layer for the Azure map visual, which lets you see the geo connections between different points in a map. I can see this being used to visualize things like flight paths or directions to certain places. So this is how it works. You have a series of geolocation as points into a path. This will be like X or Y coordinates. Then you can use a date time field as your path order. This will basically tell Power BI how that path will be drawn. If you have multiple paths in the same map, you can distinguish between them by using an ID. They'll then be drawn as separate paths in the same map. Then you can use customization options like line colors or transparency to distinguish between these two paths. This is just a summary of how this feature works. And I'm sure there are a lot of other features as well as some caveats to bear in mind. So I'm gonna see if I can cover this in a greater detail in a separate video of its own very soon. Small multiples are not available on preview for new card visuals. Small multiples is not a new feature and it's available on your typical visuals like your bar charts and your line charts. And it's basically a feature that lets you visualize your cards in a grid format to show your different categories of data. So for example, if you have two cards for sales and store counts, you can add territory in your small multiples, which will categorize these two cards for each territory that exists in a grid format for you. It includes a bunch of customization features which we'll try to cover in another video. Just be aware that it's a preview feature at the moment. So if you want to use it, you want to make sure that you're in the November 2024 version or later of Power BI Desktop and make sure you enable it in the preview feature settings. A new visual called Text Slicer is now available for preview in Power BI, which is basically a free text search feature. This type of search already exists as an additional feature to the Slicer visual, but this seems to be a feature of its own. To use it is actually very simple. You simply add the field that you want the 
filter to work on. Now when you type on the text box of the text slicer and hit enter, it will automatically apply the filters to your visuals in your page. Like the previous feature, it's also in preview. So if you want to use it, you want to make sure you're in the November 2024 version and enable it in the preview settings. Defining new measures is now available on the DAX query view, which will let you create measures, calculated columns and tables a lot faster if you're using DAX query view. Metric sets is now available in preview. Now we covered this briefly last month, which is basically a way to centralize your business key metrics into one place. I can see it useful for scenarios where you have so many Power BI reports in your organization that both users and developers may have difficulty finding certain metrics. So for users, it will be just one interface to go to and it will have a collection of metrics that might be critical to the business. And then for developers, you can connect directly to these metrics as a data source and build your own reports on top of them. I am curious how this will work in practice because metrics are basically connected to semantic models already. So using the metrics as a data source sounds like it will complicate the already complicated lineage of your data. So while it's streamlined on the front end, it might be a nightmare to manage on the back end. So I'll have to check out this feature for you guys and let you know what my thoughts are. You can now set up DLP policies to auto-restrict access to semantic models that contain sensitive information. This could be PII, personal information, or payment details that you want to control access and distribution of within your tenant. If enabled, the admins will see an indication to see that the data in the models are restricted, which they can either leave it as it is, report as an issue or override, which still gives them control over how this report is used. For consumers that have restricted access, they will now see this indicator. So while they might have access to the report and the model themselves, access to the data within those semantic models can be restricted further, which I think is a good precaution if you're working with sensitive data. The MDL extension for Visual Studio is now available, which will let you author semantic models directly into Visual Studio without basically doing it in Power BI. The TMDL feature was released a few months ago and it provides a more text-friendly way to store your semantic models. This means that Power BI developers can make changes to their models like uh, creating or modifying measures by editing the TMDL file as opposed to needing to open up the Power BI reports and doing it there. This new extension makes these edits even easier if you're using Visual Studio because it provides a lot of handy features that you would expect, like IntelliSense for auto-completions, semantic highlighting, and error diagnostics if you have any typos. And that's really it for this month. There are lots of interesting preview features that came out this month and I think it deserves their own deep dives. So if you have any specific ones that you'd like me to look at first, let me know in the comment section box below. And as usual, I'll leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below if you want to check it out yourselves. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so you to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, you have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.